I don't have to read the scripture this morning. Um, Heidi, you did a great job in reading the scripture. So we can get right into uh, Zacchaeus. I've entitled this The Poor Little Rich Man. And uh, we, you can see why I named it that as we go along in the sermon, as you know, with the story about Zacchaeus. The reason I chose this particular sermon is, as I do well said, when you think of Gaelic Vacation Bible School, this is probably the number one story taught to little kids. Even though it's not part of our BBS story this week, but I just think of Zacchaeus when I think of Vacation Bible School. So, Chris, I want you to come up here, and you're going to help me lead the congregation in Zacchaeus. You know this song better than I do. So, come on up. So, we're going to do a duet together here. Oh, okay. She didn't know this. Didn't you tell me? I'll get it started. Here we go. Okay. Okay, everybody sing. You know this song, okay? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. Zacchaeus 
means pure. Perhaps when Zacchaeus was presented by his parents to the temple, they gave him that name to express their feelings and hope for him. If that were the case, I and his parents were still living, I'm quite sure they were broken hearted for Zacchaeus had become anything but pure in his manner of living. Luke tells us that Zacchaeus was the chief publican, which means that he was appointed by the rubber of Roman government to supervise the collection of taxes from the entire district. The tax rate was fixed by Rome, and then the schedule of taxes was given to the chief publican. Zacchaeus was free to increase the amount of taxes he collected as much as he dared to pay himself and also the tax collectors that worked under him. I'm sure glad that we don't have a system like that today. And I know that we only, sometimes you wonder if we don't because of the amount of taxes that we do pay. But you can see how angry the people became with a tax system like this one. Thus Zacchaeus and his fellow tax collectors, I don't need to say it, they were hated by the Jews. Not only because they betrayed their people, but they were selling out to Rome as well. But also, the taxes were unbelievably high. Consequently, in spite of his great wealth, Zacchaeus was banned from any social life by the Jews. In fact, he was executed by the temple and the synagogue. You might say that Zacchaeus was a man without a country. Michael Jordan, which I know that everybody knows who Michael Jordan was, but he retired from the Chicago Bulls in 1993. He had a great friend called B.J. Armstrong that was Jordan's closest friend. He was worried for Jordan in 1993. After he retired, he realized that Michael Jordan had all the money he could ever muster just with his endorsements alone, but even more so, he would be Jay Armstrong was worried about all the time that he had on his hands. And that was quoted also by Bill Jackson. You might say uh, Michael Jordan had a brief job with Haynes Underwear for a while, which took care of some of his time. You have to think about that. A brief job, okay. And then also, we uh, think of, well, he did better than Joe Namath. At least he didn't have to try on nylons. You know? <laughs> Joe Namath from, was from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, where our kids went to college. I just thought I'd throw that in. But remember, Joe Namath uh, had to, uh, Phil remembers that, the nylons. <laughs> I thought, man, what did, what's the guy do to make money trying on nylons? But fortunately, we think about Zacchaeus. He made right choices concerning his money and his time later in life. <laughs> Let's go on next. The second point that we're looking at today is the curiosity of Zacchaeus. Listen to Luke again. He wanted to see who Jesus was, being a short man, and he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree to see that Jesus was coming that way, verses 3 and 4. It's a breath of fresh air as we look at Zacchaeus. We know that he was curious. A healthy curiosity is a hopeful, hopeful sign of a person. Curiosity and the urge to instigate indicates that a person is of good mental state. I look at the children out here and it's always exciting. Sometimes curiosity can get them in trouble. But it's good that your children have a high curiosity, especially for learning. And every teacher looks for that, the curiosity of learning. And uh, Zacchaeus had that as well. I don't know where we got the expression, curiosity killed the cat. It should be, curiosity killed the mouse for trying 
to discover and the curiosity of getting the cheese off the mouse trap. I, I just thought of that. I don't know. I know I have a strange mind, but but anyway, I was thinking more of the mouse with the secure with the curiosity anyway. But Zacchaeus wanted to see exactly what Jesus was and what he was all about. And that curiosity led to his salvation. Some have thought that Zacchaeus could have been waiting for Jesus to come. And that was his big moment. I doubt that. Rather, the situation was simply that a great crowd of people surged down the Jericho Street. And Zacchaeus was overcome with curiosity to see what was going on. And of course, we all know what he did from then. He couldn't see Jesus, so he climbed up into a sycamore tree and to a, probably a low-lying limb and boosted himself to the top of the tree among the leaves of the tree, right over the roadway in which Jesus was to pass. The Holy Spirit often uses curiosity to bring people to the awareness of the, their lostness and their need for a Savior. And that's exactly what happened to Zacchaeus. There's a lot of people's curiosity that automatically, automatically puts them on the edge of the cliff of sin. Hopefully it will work to the good of our vacation Bible school this week that they will see that something's going on here. And uh, this is a, a real jungle around here. And hopefully the kids' curiosity will be led to their wondering about what Jesus is all about. And of course the teachers have a really important responsibility in taking those children and building up that curiosity so that they will want Jesus eventually into their hearts. God has put us beside the cliff to warn people as they are getting close to the edge of falling into sin. We must say to them, look out. Don't get close to sin. Don't get close to the devil. And we as Christians have the responsibility of not allowing people to fall over the great cliff of sin. And of course, if you fall into the great cliff of sin, you're always going to get hurt. Some may even die eternally in their sin. That's why it's so important for us to tell them the gospel that we be watchmen so that they will not fall into the great cliff of sin for eternity. We must tell them about the truth of what Jesus has meant to us and through the scriptures tell them how they can escape falling into the great cliff of eternity of sin and eventually into hell. But there are, are those that will jump into the Cliff, over the cliff into sin with great, with great excitement. Yes, we feel responsible for their pain, but the Father reminds us that we are not responsible for their curiosity of jumping into devastation. We are responsible as Christians to tell them the word and to warn them that it's a very dangerous thing to get near to the devil and falling off of the cliff into sin and then eventually into death of eternal uh, of the destiny of, of, of hellfire and brimstone. We are watchmen and we must take it seriously. And that's why we take daily education Bible school seriously because we want to tell them about the Lord. And there's a lot of parents that do not tell their little ones about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have that responsibility at Vacation Bible School. Chris will remember this. I had a youth minister that wasn't very ambitious in Minerva, Ohio. And he came up to me and he said, I don't want to do daily Vacation Bible School this year. And I just don't see any reason why I should have to do Vacation Bible School. Let me tell you, I have a great passion for Vacation Bible School. I sent that new, new youth minister down and told him about five, six reasons why we are going to have Vacation Bible School at Minerva this year. Tonight, I'm going to share eight reasons on a small devotion at the pool why it's important to have Vacation Bible School. 
I've thought of eight, and I'm hoping you'll think of maybe eight more. Why? We have Vacation Bible School at Liscombe. Yes, we are responsible to tell the gospel to all children and to our family and to anyone else that we come in contact that is falling into the traps of Satan. How about you? Are you a watchman for the Lord Jesus Christ? Third point, the encounter Zacchaeus had with Jesus. We're going to talk about that. The encounter that Zacchaeus had with Jesus. When we, Jesus reached the spot and looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, you come down immediately at once. And Jesus welcomed him gladly. Luke 19, 5 and 6. Notice this phrase, Jesus, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up. Most of us, if we're walking through a large crowd like Jesus did, would probably not have noticed Zacchaeus up in the tree, especially where the leaves were kind of sheltering him. But we know that Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was lost and he needed a savior. You can see that uh, Jesus really fulfilled Luke 19.10. And this is one of those verses I learned at Baylor Vacation Bible School, where Jesus came to seek and to save all that was lost. Jesus was very compassionate and loving and searching the crowd for candidates for the kingdom. There is no doubt that Jesus stopped when he came beneath that overhanging limb and he saw Zacchaeus up in the tree. Jesus called Zacchaeus by name. Could have they met before? Probably not. Because he was the son of God, Jesus knew exactly who Zacchaeus was before he even saw him. So Jesus commanded Zacchaeus to come down and what was he going to do? He was going to his house today. There was another time when Jesus um, met a woman and uh, said to her, give me a drink. And that was the Samaritan woman at the well. And it was very interesting that both of those people were outcasts to society. Zacchaeus was an outcast as well as the Samaritan woman. But yet Jesus saw the need for those two people to come to him, and they did. The people were aghast at that Jesus would be seen with the company of, of such the like of Zacchaeus. Before Jesus' visit in, Zac in Zacchaeus' home was over, there was a radical change that had taken place in the tax collector's life. His sins were forgiven, and his heart was changed. In fact, it was so changed that he gave 50% of all his possessions to the poor, and he gave, how many times? Four times back to the ones that he had cheated as far as their taxes were concerned. Whereas once in his life he was a cheater, a traitor, selfish, self-centered, greedy, and uncaring to people, he was now characterized not by getting, but now he was characterized by giving. This is the way that Christianity works. Before Zacchaeus met Jesus, he was mastered by greed, and then after that, he was mastered by grace. This week, there will be some children in your classes, teachers, that will make you think of Zacchaeus in his early life. In fact, you may think that uh, I have Zacchaeus in his younger years in my very own class. You might be tempted to write those children off as hopeless and give more attention and love to the brighter students that seem to kind of like you and are listening. There might be a diamond in the rough in the class that you have this week. A teacher could react to that statement by saying, I don't see any diamonds in this child, let me tell you. But uh, I remember at Minerva, Ohio, and Worthington, Minnesota, there was two 
boys that uh, most teachers wrote off as saying, these guys are hopeless. I cannot teach them anything. The two kids that became Diamonds in the Rough were Todd Thomas of Minerva, Ohio. I mean, he drove the teachers crazy in Sunday school and puppets and youth groups and in church. He was a devil. <laughs> but eventually, he became a minister and uh, a great minister of the gospel in uh, Florida today. And then there was another one that uh, in Worthington, Minnesota, his name was Jim Shade. And uh, he had potential, but uh, boy, he, he, was, he was something else. He would drive some of the kids to Bible study. The way he drove was that uh, the reason that they were in the attitude of prayer is that they were thankful that they got there to the Bible study without being killed. Uh, but he was wild and vicious. And one time, I never will forget, I had a, a, a harvest party at the church, and I said, I don't want any devils, I don't want any uh, things of the world, I want you to dress up as a Bible character. And uh, so he dressed as up as Rahab the prostitute. I'll never forget it for as long as I live. But he became a minister, and uh, in fact, eventually he spoke at the North American Christian Convention. So don't give up on those kids, uh, even though you think there is no hope at all. Conclusion. What a glorious ending to this story. And this is the key verse. Today, salvation has come to this house. This was Jesus' mission. Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. May that be our mission. At a wedding, there was a little granddaughter, about the age of uh, the little children that the children that we have here today. Her name was Melissa, and uh, they were at a wedding. And Melissa said to her her grandmother, she said, "Why does the uh, bride wear white?" And quickly, the grandmother said, "It was it's for purity and for happiness." And then after that, Melissa looked up at her grandmother and said, well, why does the groom wear black? <laughs> well, anyway, today and this week, we will have all shades of different colors of children that will be coming to us. May we as DVPS helpers and teachers and workers, may they become white as snow in our ministry at Vacation Bible School we minister them this week. May salvation come to their individual lives and to their individual homes. Let's pray.